Hello everyone. Uh, this is my most recently completed book. This is The Dwarves by Marcus Heights. Um, it is, unsurprisingly, a fantasy novel. It is quite a chunk of a book, reaching some 700 plus pages. And it's taken me longer than it should have to read. Um, mainly because I got interrupted in my life of reading by a computer game called Cyberpunk 2077. Completely beside the point, but this took me a long time to read. That's all I'm saying. Um, now this book is something that I've seen on the shelves in the fantasy sci-fi areas that I linger in in bookstores. I've seen it for years and years and years, and I've always kind of wanted to read it um, because... I've always quite liked the dwarves. Um, the problem being, this book is not affiliated with Lord of the Rings, Warhammer, or uh, anything like it. Uh, in actual fact, it takes, of course, it takes a lot of inspiration from Lord of the Rings. Um, it even works one of the uh, Hobbit book titles into the script in this book, uh, which was. It's kind of a nice touch. It wasn't, you know, they didn't do it again and again and again, like flogging the dead horse, but it kind of made me roll my eyes, to be honest. But anyway, it was in there, and I noticed. Uh, basically, my read on this universe in which the dwarves is set is that Marcus Heights really, really, really wanted to write for the Black Library, uh, which is the publishing house for Warhammer. Um... And this is basically a Warhammer uh, fan fiction, essentially, because he doesn't have the rights. It's not published by Black Library, um, so, but all the same things are in there. So like the orcs and uh, the orcs called orcs, which is perhaps uh, legal and therefore possible. But he's got goblins. That he can't call goblins, so he has to call them something else. I think he calls them Bognilium or something. Um, and you've got wizards, you've got uh, high elves, you've got wood elves, you've got dark elves. Um, so you, you've got all the components for basic Warhammer uh, fan fiction. Um, and he's uh, obviously he's not called anything by the same kind of name to managed to get into the publishing house in the first place but as you can see from the maps um, nothing is familiar to Warhammer um, and as you can also see from the maps things have very unusual names now this book uh, kind of jarred on me for a couple of reasons um, the lead character uh, it's very much a fantasy adventure you like it gets given uh, a task to do, he has to adventure around, and it's just not one kind of non-stop adventure. Um, it kind of leads to, um, it's almost like a, a bit of a silly bugger's place. Um, he has a task to do, and the task becomes very clear about what he's going to do, even though the task that, um, like as you objectively look at it, you're like, you're going to do what, based off what? <laughs> like, it's not like there's a... I mean, all he had to do, uh, Heights had to do, was put in, like, a, a fortune teller or something and have someone tell a fortune, and that would have been good enough reason, right? But they kind of... Uh, they kind of figure things out from this kind of old script. Uh, and the way they figure things out is really loose, but uh, it's just picking it minor stuff but if you're if you're into this book it's because it's fantasy and because it's um well it's heavily heavily unsurprisingly heavily dwarf based fantasy uh, but it's it's just one massive adventure um but the the plot itself like it's not particularly appealing to me there's nothing in it that was like oh that's like that's um, unique, that's compelling, that's different, that's, um, it's just a fantasy adventure. Um, but there's lots of li uh, different characters in it, uh, and the main character, and I have to say, this 
person here in the front. This is just generic dwarf. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the story as far as I'm aware. This scar here and the indentation from the helmet doesn't make it into the book that I can remember. Um, but anyway, the, the lead character um, is called Tungdil. Tungdil is a terrible name, in my opinion. And, I mean, a name is a name, right? You have to accept it. <laughs> it's just what it is. But when it's in a book, and it's a fantasy book, and you're like, why would you call your lead character Tungdil? It just makes no sense to me. It just sounds bad. Um, and there's so many different characters, and they've got so many different bad names. And sometimes it's because they're really similar. Um, sometimes it's because they're just they're so alien and he says it like maybe once and then just kind of expects you not to bump into that hurdle the next time you get there and unfortunately every time I got to those names it was a hurdle um, but for all that for everything so far I found this quite compelling to read uh, the fight scenes in particular I really enjoyed um, the characters who you find first of all really after Tung Dil starts off on his adventure um, are the twins um, whose names if I get them correct are uh, Bowen Dil and Boyen Dil right <laughs> again names um, the, the twins are saved in part because Boyen Dil who is essentially a dwarf slayer from the Warhammer universe a dual axe wielding kind of lunatic um, he uh, is also called Ironheart, um, and he and his brother are an absolute uh, gem of a pairing. Uh, the whole way through when they were in it, I was kind of like, yep, yeah, this is it, this is good. That's kind of, it had a good core. Um, from the way this is done, like Marcus Heitz, I think, uh, must have written this in German first, someone has translated it. Uh, I don't know if it's things being lost in translation, but there's some things in here that just, um, they just stand out a mile. Like, there's, there's some small paragraphs that you read, uh, and then in the next sentence below, uh, they completely undo the paragraph above, um, which is absolutely alien, because why would that paragraph need to be in there in the first place? Um, so there's odd little things, right? But... Um, overall, The Dwarves is still worth reading, and I have come to class it in my mind as uh, exceptional fan fiction. Um, and I would like to draw the line of distinction between if you're reading fan fiction uh, and you find something that's good, it's good fan fiction, right? Uh, this is like it's top tier fan fiction, but sometimes if you're reading fan fiction. Um, you might find something that's it's kind of like a cut above and when it's a cut above I, I personally don't um, ascribe fan fiction as a label to it I think if it's exceptional fan fiction it's still fan fiction if it's been written as fan fiction but it's something else it's that next step above um, then it's kind of like Someone needs to, someone from a publishing house, an agent, whoever, needs to grab hold of that person, the author, and um, escalate them to the point where they're not writing fan fiction, to where they're writing uh, actual novels themselves. Um, and if that makes any sense at all, I still put the dwarves as exceptional fan fiction. It hasn't quite broken out of the fan fiction title. Um, which is why I know there's more books from Heights, more stories of the dwarves, and I will not be following up uh, and continuing to read the series. However, this book, I think, is still worth a read. It's, it's just a great fantasy adventure. Um, there's bits in it that are slow, there's bits in it that are a bit boring, but through and through, I mean, if you can make it through 700 pages, um, I think The Dwarfs is uh, a good, worthy little read. Well, it's not little about it, is it? It's, um, it's a colossal 700 pages. But still, if you've read The Dwarfs, if you'd like to talk about it, 
uh, you know where you'll find me. I'll be in the comments. And that's it, folks. That's all I got. See you around.